How's it going, everybody? Adrian here for Gaming Observer Radio. Uh, today we have a, a very special show because we're going to be talking about our games of the year for 2020. A lot of really interesting games came out last year, uh, and we're, we're really excited to talk about it. Uh, today, as always, I'm joined by my esteemed co-host, Kato Sepp. Hello, Kato. Hey, how are you? Extremely well. Uh, I'm very excited to talk about some video games. Um, and then today we are also joined by somebody who has been with us before. Uh, it's been somewhere between six and 12 months. Um, but but he on YouTube, he's youtube.com slash games as literature. He is the game professor. And to us, he is uh, Sam. Hello, Sam. And thank you so much for, for joining us. Hey, happy to be on again. Yeah. Um, so, folks, we're, we're going to talk about some some games of the year that came out in, in 2020, our personal favorites. Um, but as we were kind of putting this together, we realized, hey, we actually haven't played a tremendous amount. We don't maybe have the breadth to uh, to be the definitive voice on this. And so Sam had the brilliant idea. We're not just going to talk about the games that came out in 2020, but also games that we played for the first time in 2020, even if it didn't necessarily come out then, uh, or even games that we wished we played in 2020 uh, <laughs> that came out uh, last year. So uh, why don't we just kick things off? We'll, we'll just start right in with the games that we really loved that came out last year that we played, because uh, that's an easy one to, to jump right into. Uh, Kato, before we before we get to like the game of the year, why don't you tell us one of your favorites from from last year? Yeah, you're going to make me start. Yeah, All I right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I have a list. Uh, several of these, I think, will be be obvious and be kind of on everybody's list. Um, but I did really want to talk about a game that surprised me. I didn't think I was going to play it. And I even when I played it, I kind of didn't expect it to be all that great. Uh, but Paper Mario, the Origami King uh, came out on the Switch. And I have not enjoyed a Paper Mario game this much since the Thousand Year Door. <laughs> and I was really pleasantly surprised. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever love a Mario RPG again. But here Paper it was. Mario, and like, that was one of those games that came out, and I was like, it, I feel like it went relatively under the radar compared to most Nintendo releases, and I was really happy to see that, like, the people who played it really loved it. Yeah, I mean, the series has been going downhill for quite a while, but, you know, they seem to spend more time with it. I, I do think this game got a little more hype than some of the others, especially the Wii U ones, but... Um, it's almost it almost just bypasses a lot of the issues because it's honestly it's not totally an rpg like it is uh on, on the surface it's got an rpg wrapper but really the combat plays more like a puzzle game and i think that surprised me and it was a lot of fun my wife and i wound up playing it a lot of it together and uh just kind of figuring things out the writing is hilarious uh it was just in 2020 especially when everything's depressing and i'm just really looking for really happy fun charming things uh paper mario was amazing and it was better than i ever expected it to be i think that's that's definitely one of the common themes that 2020 had right is i, I think the games that are going to stand out the most are like the wholesome uh, happy games that that are yeah. just going to make you feel better yeah i mean i didn't play the last of us part two even though i you know i really was looking forward to it but then you know if everything happened, and I'm like, no, I can't do this to myself right now. So yeah, it's on my list later. None, of us, later. none mm -hmm. of us even have Last of Us Part Two on our lists, do we? No, I don't think so. We couldn't bear no. to play it. It was too painful. <laughs> I mean, I I did, and I think it was good. Oh. I just there were. I, I also <laughs> think it had some problems, and there are games that I liked more. So <laughs> fair, fair. Well, why don't but, you go ahead? Tell us, tell us one of the the games that you loved. Oh. uh man one of them is rough um <laughs> you know what i'm going to talk a little bit about crash bandicoot 4 it's about time i'm really excited crash to hear 2, you talk about this yeah crash 2 was probably the it wasn't the first game i ever like played obsessively those would go to the humongous entertainment adventure games like <laughs> putt putt and spy fox and stuff yeah <laughs> but uh it was the first game i fell in love with completed a hundred percent multiple times and you know so crash bandicoot overall has a very special place in my heart which makes me sad that it hasn't been good since the ps1 uh <laughs> I know there are stands for a couple of them, but not me. Uh, so having a sequel that basically pretended and even lampshaded, it's pretending that the others didn't exist in the first place and actually just really went back to the basics of what Crash Bandicoot was supposed to be while updating it in a few key ways that made it play a little better to modern sensibilities was just fantastic. Um, the level design is absolutely incredible. I think some of the changes like... Uh, you can play with lives like in the original game, but you can also play so that it counts your deaths like more you know, modern platformers tend to, but it still rewards you in certain ways for not dying or dying under a certain amount of times. Like it really 
it, it manages to capture the same feeling of trying to get through in as many, in as few deaths as possible without actually giving us that same archaic like oh well got to go back to the beginning now thing um and yeah like you know it changes the formula a little bit in in some like small ways but overall it just it feels so great it's such a classic crash bandicoot game in all the ways that i've wanted ever since you know warped and haven't really gotten uh i just it was really solid i loved it also surprisingly hilarious uh so, some of the cutscenes just made me laugh a whole lot actually it was just it was really good that's awesome so, are, yeah are, are you big on like 3d platformers in general or is crash like kind of an exception um i enjoy them but not as much necessarily as a lot of other people uh recently at least i was really big on them in the ps1 days even played some of the crappy ones that everyone's forgotten about like the croc games and stuff but um since then it's more a genre that i enjoy but am not necessarily super big on ever since i started focusing more on storytelling in video games 3d platformers don't usually have a huge presence in that sphere um but i i enjoy them every now and again and uh crash bandicoot was just formative enough to me that it's one of the series that i still love you know, from that time that I played more of them, I guess. So, yeah, it's great. How do you think it compares to the other Crash games? Um, honestly, I'd say it's on their level, like better than one for sure. Uh, but all of them are better than one. Um, <laughs> I actually really two... love one. I'm not gonna lie, but I, I mean, on. one is good. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm not dissing one. It's a good game. Just they improved on it incrementally over the course of the series for sure. Naughty Dog did at least. Um, yeah, I'd say it's up there with three and maybe with two, which is still my favorite. Um, like, it's just really good. Uh, getting 100% on it is an absolute pain. Abs I'm never going to do it, ever. It's too much. But, um, you know, the actual experience of playing through it, at least, is just top-tier Crash Bandicoot. I think it's really good. Uh, okay, great. Let me Let me jump in on mine now. Uh, I'm yeah. going to talk about yeah. this one. We we were just taking a second to talk about, uh, you know, kind of these these wholesome games, these games that, that brought some light to our very dark 2020. Um, and for me, that at least it was a very recent game for me, but Spiritfarer, um, this uh, is a, yeah. like, it, it th this game really came at a time for me that was like cozy, wholesome, just, you know, there was obviously sadness and it, like it's, it's a whole story, but um, just, just being able to exist in that world was so like the piece that I needed at the time that I needed it um, came for me at least it came towards the end of the year and uh, I was getting really intense with school and then you know obviously everything going on in the world and so just being able to, to go and, and live in that world for a bit I never finished the game and I don't plan on finishing it actually um, if I was more patient then I definitely would but I ended up getting to a point where I was like I've seen the game I want to play some other games because I'm impatient uh, so I, you know I'm, I'm not going to stick to the end but I mean they, they just did extremely well at like cohesive design really nice characters really great character arcs um you know characters that, like usually i don't get too invested in video game stories i don't know why it's just not my uh, uh, people are better at that kind of thing than i am but um i i really loved the, the the arcs that those characters went through and it had great humor they they had a great job at, at giving these these guys personality and and quirks and stuff like that so uh, yeah, I was a big fan of the game. And for anybody listening who hasn't played it, I mean, if you're looking for something that where, where you can go at your own pace, you know, if you're if you're like a Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing type person, um, Spiritfarer is not a game that punishes you for doing things wrong, or 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 at least there there might be, and I just never saw it. But I I played very at a very basic level, so I don't think it's it's very hard to uh, to do well in that game. But yeah, I was I was really happy with Spiritfarer. Yeah, that one's uh, quite high on my list, actually, of games from this year that I want to play. Uh, back when it first came out, someone was just like, hey, there's this game about leading people to the afterlife, and you can play co-op, and the other person's a cat. And I'm like, well, I need to get this for my partner, and I obviously, <laughs> we just haven't yet. I had um, no idea there was co-op. There's co-op in Spiritfarer? Yeah, yeah, the other person is, I, I haven't played the game, so I assume the cat is just with you. And co-op has the person take over the cat. I'm not sure, but that would make sense. Okay, that actually upsets me because this entire time I was playing that game while my partner was watching, and I had no idea there oh. even was co-op. So now I have to go back and play it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'd heard about it at least, and yeah, uh, yeah yep. that's it, it. Seems really very much down my alley, so I want to give it a shot for sure. 
So you didn't find the like, uh, I know death positivity is is literally supposed to be being OK with death, but I always find this stuff really depressing anyway. Like it wasn't <laughs> too uh, kind of difficult for you. So, yeah, the whole story is that you are a person who, who is taking over for Charon, who is the, the ancient Greek uh, spir- uh, uh, fairy master who takes people from one world to the next. And very much a core mechanic of that game is that you you go on a journey with people and then they go away and you grow attached to these characters and then they go away. So actually, when I did kind of get to the end of some of those characters, I was like, it was a little emotional. I had it was a bit of a tearjerker, but for the most part, it was almost like you were celebrating the journey that you went on and and the story that you saw them go through, as opposed to being like, I am sad all the time now, which I, I felt it was it was done well. There it's is a kind know. of tearjerker that I feel like can be a, a positive, you know, overall in the end a positive thing that you can use during times like this. My sure. partner and I watched Anohana during all of this. Oh my! And that God. actually worked pretty well. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Lots of tears, but happy tears, eventually. <laughs> uh, Kato, do you, do you want to do another game? Yeah. What else did I play in 2020? <laughs> um, you know one thing that also kind of surprised me? It came out of nowhere, and I was really, really happy for it, was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. <laughs> uh, which I, I can't say... It's not my game of the year. It's not like, you know, absolute top tier. I spent, like, a weekend playing it pretty much the entire weekend um <laughs> but those games are just so oh they're not for everyone the three minute timer i know annoys a lot of people but i actually i grew up with tony hawk pro skater 2 in particular um so i loved those games and i loved revisiting it again more than i thought i would uh kind of like paper mario and uh, they did such a good job of wrapping those two games together uh, and adding a bunch of different goals and things. So you are constantly feeling like you're accomplishing things. Um, and then adding a lot of the mechanics from the later games. It, some of it maybe makes the game a little too easy. Uh, the I, I forget what they're called, but the ground tricks um, where you're mashing buttons no oh yeah like remember. the specials where you can amp up your multiplier super easily yeah, oh, yeah exactly uh those make a lot of the point challenges really really easy to do uh whereas i could never do them when i played on the on the dreamcast um but still it was a great weekend i blew through it and really really enjoyed that game so yeah uh kato you know this but like i have like this really weird niche when it comes to skating games or skateboarding games like i've played Tony Hawk mm-hmm. and Skate 3 and uh, like a mobile game that I've literally been playing since 2012 and like <laughs> Ollie Ollie, right? Like for some reason I managed to get myself in that niche even though I've never been a skateboarder. And um, <laughs> I, like I really, actually I don't have it on my list but that definitely is one of the games that I wish I had played in 2020 because I would have sunk so much time into it. It's a lot of actually, fun. I actually did rent it and give it a shot because it's, Pro Skater 2 in particular has a weird place in my nostalgia because it, uh, there was a point in my life where I didn't have a PlayStation, but a friend did. He had Crash Bandicoot 2, Gran Turismo, and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, and the only one of those I cared about at all was Crash Bandicoot 2. <laughs> but we had to play multiplayer, and uh, Pro Skater was the one I liked more than Gran Turismo, so we played it a lot when I wanted to play something else, but I still remember it very fondly for some reason. <laughs> so I enjoyed yeah. messing around with the remake a little bit. It's it, They did a good job on it. Yeah, it was really impressive. I, I loved the free skate. I had the same kind of deal when I was a kid uh, before I wound up getting it on Dreamcast, but uh, played it on PlayStation, the free skate, and just would wander around yeah. and do random tricks and suck. I was so bad. <laughs> I think I am still so bad, but I was able to get through a lot of the remake because of those ground tricks. Just ramp it up the multipl- multiplier. Uh, Sam, I'm going to have you... to find and send it to you in the chat because I did make, I, I went all Monster Factory in the character creator. Yes! And uh, I'll have to try and find the picture and put it in the chat here. But Oh, you yeah, could do anyway. so many just so dumb things. It was amazing. <laughs> yep, I will work on that. But anyway, sorry, go on. Uh, would you like to do the next game? Oh, yes. Um, Just another game. One yeah, of the ones that any I for, any from your list, about. yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to talk about Murder by Numbers. Yes. Yay. I get the feeling I'm going to be the only person to talk about Murder by Numbers. Um, Probably, but I loved I, it. <laughs> I have, I personally, I have a fascination with, like, a particular broad umbrella of sh- games where, like, you take a puzzle or some other kind of, like, sort of abstracted video game, uh, like, gameplay format, and then use it as, like, a metaphor for something more 
a direct and literal in a story. So like uh, Puzzle Quest, I love because it turns a bejeweled system into an RPG battle system, and I think that's cool. Uh, and so this is uh, Picross as uh, finding evidence in a crime game. It's like Phoenix Wright with Picross instead of like uh, logical story puzzles or whatever. And it's really good. It's really charming. I never played Picross in my life before now, and honestly, uh, it's fine. As those kinds of puzzle things go, I honestly don't enjoy Picross a whole super lot, but I enjoyed the heck out of this game anyway, because it's just a lot of fun. The writing and characters are incredibly charming. I just enjoyed the heck out of it, and it scratched that itch for, you know, general mechanics as metaphor for something just extremely well. I enjoyed it a lot. You get your Phoenix right, you get your your puzzle game, just all yes. mashed up into one exactly that's you know i i haven't really had my eye on this game through the year in fact the most time that i've spent looking at it was when i saw it on your list of of top games of the year um (laughs) and i realized like this is this would be perfect for my partner because she is not a core gamer like she doesn't spend she's you know she played animal crossing stardew but like doesn't spend a lot of time gaming and um but she does a whole bunch of picross or or nonograms on her phone uh all the time and so I'm like, and she had it, she got a kick out of a, uh, uh, Phoenix Wright as well. Like just for like a weekend, she like just played through the first hour of the game or something. So I feel like this would be a good mix of, for her, at least for, for some. It's, just, it's Picross with a cute robot and murder mysteries. So like, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if, uh, I don't even know if the game is actually still up, but if either of you guys still have a uh, 3DS lying around, uh, Pokemon Picross was really, really good. Um, you don't even have to like be, I mean, it's more focused on Picross than uh, than Murder by Numbers, but it adds a lot of like unlockable stuff. You get to basically catch the Pokemon every time you finish the finish the nonogram, and it was cute. It was very good. Anyway, random thought that is not from 2020. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay, let me. Uh, I'll talk about Half Life Alex. I think because uh, Sam, did you? I think you put it on your list as an honorable mention, right? Uh, yes, because I haven't finished it. It's incredible from what I've played so far, but I'm only a few levels in. Uh, things are getting scary. So, I, <laughs> well, and my room got full of boxes, so I had to take a break. But um. so this is like I put it on my list. I didn't finish it either, and I'm not actually going to finish it because the inconvenience of moving my PC into a room where I can actually play it is a thing. Because I have a Quest and it's not hooked up all the time. Um, Wait, can you play it on a Quest without wires? No, you or- need to play it through a Steam Link uh, into a gaming mm. PC. Yeah. Um, so w- what I will say about Half Life Alex is that I have spent all of my time in that game. I think uh, like I I only made it to chapter five or six. I didn't make it incredibly far, but uh, I spent most of my time literally just standing there and, like, picking things up and throwing it. Or, like, <laughs> there's, like, this special ability they have where you can, like, pull things towards you if it's at a distance so it's you don't have to move. so good. So satisfying. Like, you just yeah. point at anything and you just go, foop, and it's in your hand. And it is... And it's great, too, because one of the, at least for me, one of the things I tend to have the most problem with in VR when I have, like, a, you know, because my play space is... In my old house, at least, it was like um, like one and a half by one and a half meters, like the smallest you can get with the Vive. Now it's a little <laughs> bigger, but even so, like knowing how to like position yourself so you can bend down and get something on the floor when you have like walls or whatever and your chaperone bounds is a big problem. So to make it so that you can just whoop, yeah, seriously, what an cool. elegant and incredible solution for that. <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, but anyway, they just did a tremendous job at like making the environments in that game fun to interact with. And so I like, maybe I would have gotten to the end if I had just tried to beeline it at a certain point, but, um, yeah, it just, (laughs) just existing in that world was such a, was such a treat. And then like experiencing certain things for the first time and, and seeing where VR might be in the future, like shooting a gun and manually reloading it is so intense like you get into a fight and then you run out of ammo. You can't just click a button to get new ammo. You have to like take the cartridge out, put a new cartridge in, cock the pit. Like that whole process is so exciting. And I, I, I look forward to seeing what that's going to evolve into. Yeah. I do got to give points to Robo Recall though for like throwing guns and just grabbing them from behind your back. That was uh, <laughs> Yeah. That's a super neat way to reload also. VR is yeah. so cool. I wish I had a VR headset. You guys, you guys both have VR headsets? So jealous. Uh, there, there was a brief time where I worked a horrible, horrible job that I hated a lot that paid me really well, which is how I could afford to upgrade my PC. And, uh, then I was let go and now I don't have like, you know, I I wouldn't have the money to buy it now, but I did then. So (laughs) yeah, Yeah, I had, uh, you know, 
It's cool. I, I had a, a, a father who loves to spend his money on, on his hobbies, and he ended up buying two VR headsets for him and his partner, and then they realized that they only needed one, and so he just gave me the other one. So I, I kind of lucked into that one. Yeah, seriously. Wow. Um, okay, Kato. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Kato. One more before. Uh, I, uh, uh, you know what? Yeah, no, it's fine. Do one more game, and then we'll get into our big game of the year. One more 2020 game. Yeah. Um, I played uh, Animal Crossing because I think we all played Animal Crossing because yeah. that was a necessary 2020 <laughs> game. I, yeah. I feel like that was a requirement for all people to play <laughs> Animal Crossing. It's the only way we survived. <laughs> um, I so I actually didn't like previous Animal Crossing games. I actually bought a GameCube initially for Animal Crossing and just didn't really get into it. I really love Stardew Valley like a ton, and that has just the right amount of objectives for me. Uh, but Animal Crossing, I've always felt just you know it's very free form and it's made for that. That's the intent. Uh, but that just wasn't really my thing. Um, but New Horizons had. I think at least a little bit more. It had a lot of collectibles, um, things that you could do consistently um, that I spent a lot of time with it. I think I clocked a few hundred hours into Animal Crossing and I regret none of it. And I want to go back to it. Uh, I also don't like it how the villagers like chastise you for being gone for several days. So part of me is like, I can't go back because they'll just yell at me. So <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, again, speaking of those games that we really needed in 2020, right? Like that's that's what it was. And the thing that I really loved about Animal Crossing is how um, approachable it is to gamer to non gamers or non pe people who don't yeah. play games in the way that the three of us do. Uh, again, I, I observed my partner playing through that game like crazy when it first when she first got it, and then her mother, who is not a gamer, like she the the most that she did was Farmville on Facebook, and then all of a sudden she's like every day Animal Crossing. We spent New Year's in Animal Crossing. Like this has now become just such a core part of her life. I, I think that was really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. And there were there were so many things. And it, it's interesting because Animal Crossing, I think, uh, in a lot of ways, is really good despite its many flaws. Yeah. Like New Horizons is not a perfect game. I don't think anybody would ever claim that it is a perfect game. The <laughs> multiplayer is so needlessly restrictive, uh, yeah. like unbelievably so. The whole idea of you can only have one island per switch is absolutely bonkers. But everything yeah. is just super difficult to do you want to open up a gate to let somebody come in a multiplayer you have to like go down to the building and talk to the guy and he takes so long it's yeah. so painful to open yeah. up the stupid gate and if you have the gate open you can't do like anything it's like no you can't move anything you have to close yeah. the gate to do that it's so needlessly restrictive and yet despite all of those flaws it was still so uh you know culturally significant not even just you know, there was a niche um, kind of gaming group that was playing it. Like, it was culturally significant for at least our country. I, I don't know about others, but... It reminded me a lot, actually, of when Pokemon Go first released. Yeah. Like, there was a sense of... A lot of people made fun of it or whatever, but there was a legitimate sense of community yeah. around that in a way that just does not come around often for, like, anything, especially for video games, I'd say. And... Animal Crossing just really provided that in a time when we, you know, most forms of being with each other and interacting with each other meaningfully just weren't very accessible. Like it, it's one of those games that like if it had came, come out at any other time, I think it would have been good and popular and stuff. But I think that the, it, the timing that it came out helped it go from just, you know, a good Nintendo game to like a culturally important moment. And it was, you know, it was the game we needed when it came out for sure. <laughs> game we needed 100 <laughs> percent so okay. and it helps that it is a good upgrade on the other animal crossing games i really yeah. do believe that but yeah, good one <laughs> go ahead sam um well i guess i'm a oh now that i think about it You'd already talked about Hades in a thing, right? In another thing? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, it, we're kind of blissfully ignoring it at this point. Hades is, <laughs> is a tremendously good game, and I would love to, to talk about it with you guys. But we also did do a, a whole roundtable with a couple of other people. Uh, so if you okay. go to YouTube.com slash The Gaming Observer, if you're listening and you want to hear a whole in-depth discussion about Hades, you can feel free to check out the TGO roundtable. Um, but yeah, if you want to well, give us our, your brief thoughts on it. Yeah, in that case, I will talk briefly about yeah. Hades, because yeah. it's not my game of the year but obviously it deserves it is quite possibly the best game of the year if that distinction makes yeah. any sense um i've been a fan of super giant from the beginning um they've made four games so far and all of them are pure just absolute gold but hades is uh 
something special. I, I think that not only, I mean, like, making a good roguelite is, you know, accomplishment enough, I suppose. Like, it just plays really well. It's super smooth. All the weapons are fun to use, maybe except for the adamant rail. Um, <laughs> I like the adamant rail! <laughs> I like it. I like it fun. I don't dislike, like, there's no way to play Hades that isn't fun. But that is definitely the weapon I enjoy the least. And the weapon <laughs> I think I've succeeded in most. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it, it's just, it's a ton of fun. But I think that the real accomplishment is their method of sort of randomized storytelling separated into little chunks using a just shockingly complex algorithm with thousands and thousands of voice lines to always make it so that the game is simultaneously randomizing itself so that you're getting different bits of story and character development at various times yep. but also making it so that it is based on what you're doing and it feels like the game is responding to your actions that mm. is i mean it's something frankly that super giants already done but like you can see bits of that in their previous games like with the narration and bastion and the way that pyre pyre's story changes depending on how you perform in the rights but like this complexity in ter as a narrative engine is frankly like unprecedented and it's a huge accomplishment and it is just impressive as hell. Yeah. Um, just it's, it's an achievement for sure, which says something that it is probably, despite probably being their best game, probably also my least favorite. Um, really? Supergiant has made incredible Whoa. games. I oh. love the hell out of Bastion. Um, it's just... The, the thing for me is that a lot of what I, like, it, it's a narrative achievement, Hades is, but I also think that it is on sort of like a thematic and emotional lo level, not as engaging in some ways. I think that Bastion's story is super well told and the ending sequence is like top tier. Uh, Transistor is kind of similar in that respect, except just very much more holistic on an aesthetic level, I think, and it's incredible too. And Pyre is frankly one of the most emotionally engaging and psychologically stressful games I've played in my life. I honestly just love Pyre so much. I think it's a shame it hasn't been played as much as there are others. So like Hades is a mate and just another absolutely incredible addition to a team that's made nothing but straight up bangers, just absolute winners, top tier games, all of them. So yeah, no, Hades is great. I love it. I, I think that is a, an absolutely tremendous summation of that game. I think I think you did that justice uh, very well. Um, I, on that note, I will say that Hades is my game of the year, and I don't think I have anything to add on top of that. So I'll, I'll just go into <laughs> I'll go into another game here, um, and then we'll move into your your two games of the year. Um, I, I do want to give a, a shout out to Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Um, I, I have only recently gotten into Metroidvanias. It's kind of a genre that I discovered for the first time, like a couple of years ago, which is uh, embarrassingly late. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, when I was like, so I, I played Blind Forest and Will of the Wisps for the first time in 2020, and I was blown away at what that game actually was. Cause when I saw it, I thought it was just like in previews and stuff. I thought it was just going to be a basic platformer, right? Like a, a limbo or something like that. Um, but it ended up being like just this mechanically uh, interesting, uh, very tight movements. Like I, I loved everything about that game. And then obviously it's just like super gorgeous. Like if you spend that, I spent so much of that game just sitting there, like watching the idle animations, what's going on in the background. What is the character doing? Um, it, it is just so beautiful. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I loved this game because the other Metroidvanias that I've played, which are Hollow Knight and Bloodstained and I think something else, um, are not as approachable as what Ori is. Like, I can recommend Ori and, and tell people this isn't going to be an incredibly difficult game that you're going to struggle with, whereas something like Hollow Knight and Bloodstained, it's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, it, it's harder to recommend that to people who maybe aren't like super core gamers. So uh, anyway, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to give that a, a shout out. I think it's a great game. There's something about hand-drawn animation when it's done. Uh, it's so rare, but when it's done, it adds a ton. You know, Ori and, like, Cuphead are, are two really strong examples that you just look at it, even if you don't know anything about the animation, even if you can't, like, you know, uh, say anything definitive about it. It's just gorgeous to watch. Uh, so I, I, what I'll say is that Ori would have been my number one if it weren't for Hades coming out this year. Uh, it's it's number one you know, if you compare it against a lot of different years. I had a great time with it. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Kato, why don't you tell us what is your what is your game of the year of 2020? So uh, other than the three I listed, I also put uh, Persona 5 Royal as one of my top games of the year. But I do also I have to give it to Hades. Hades was my my number one game of the year. And uh, for what it's worth, Supergiant is uh, Pyre, Hades, Bastion, Transistor. Just 
throwing that out there. <laughs> ranking. Uh, Frankly, but, yeah, all, no, ranking, I, but, like, all I, the games are great. So, yeah, and to what to what you said, uh, Sam, about Hades, like I think comparing it to Children of Morta, which is another game that is mm -hmm. one of my top of the year, uh, showed just how impressive that narrative achievement was because Children of Morta does a very similar gameplay thing to Hades. And the narrative that Hades adds on top of that just elevates it to an infinitely higher level. And it's very impressive. Anyway, that's mine. I will uh, say Children of Morta deserves some narrative credit, too, I think. But yeah, oh, it does. Hades is just so much more complex in that regard. It's a... Uh... Mm -hmm. it's 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 something <laughs> yeah they make it seem easy uh yeah it's it's definitely not nothing about what happened in hades was easy um yeah children of Mord mordo was a great game but <laughs> yeah okay sam I, i'm very excited for this one uh tell us right. tell us your game of the well, year well i'll uh i'll just say real quick that the ones i didn't get to mention yeah. were uh ghost of tsushima which i know was in many ways kind of a normal like 3D open world thing, except that it was also just gorgeous and compelling on a number of levels, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and also the Solitaire Conspiracy, because Mike Mithel <laughs> made a short, weird FMV espionage game where Solitaire is a metaphor for organizing agents on the field, and <laughs> I, it's great, and yeah. you should all play it. Um, also, in canon, with, like, Thomas Was Alone and Volume and some of his other games, it's a lot of fun. Is it really? But, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. There are little <laughs> things that talks about the emergence event from Intelligent Life Systems, and the characters from Volume are characters in it. Like, it's oh. a, yeah. It's, Every time I you talk about this game, John Wayne like, text, but... <laughs> just uh, need this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's great, and you, sh you should all try it. It's, it, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, but my game of the year has got to go, and this is despite one very large objection. But even so, it still managed to be the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, I will admit, obviously, that I love Final Fantasy VII. I made an hour and a half long video taking apart its story and talking about what it means and how it does a great job with it. Um. And I had high hopes for this remake, and man, they just knocked pretty much everything that they had to knock out of the park out of the park. It's such a... The story is mostly faithful with additions, aside from one big thing that, again, I will get to in a sec. Um, <laughs> and some of those additions are great, uh, like developing Avalanche a lot more. Fantastic. Loved every minute of that. A couple levels drag on for a long time, because they're like, oh, let's drag this out into a whole level, and it didn't really have to be. They're like three points maybe four where that happens and that's a bit much but it's fine um but man there is <laughs> there's a lot to talk about <laughs> i i, I want to make clear that i don't think that old formats of video games are like bad at telling stories or getting things across or being compelling whatsoever but the thing is, I have a fascination with adaptation in general, and there's been a huge technological gap between the original game and this one. So to see how they took the gameplay systems and the story, the characters, the visuals, all these things, and brought them into a new era, I was very excited to see. And they did such an incredible job with it. They managed to adapt the old turn-based active time battle system into a real-time action RPG thing in a way that worked really well, I think. And I don't usually like those, frankly. Like... I, I'll take a good old-fashioned turn-based battle system over most of the, like, Kingdom Hearts-types action hybrids any day, but I really loved the way that they took important foundational elements of that system and brought it into a real-time context for this game. Um, I, I just thought it was really impressive. They, uh, The way that the characters were animated and developed and written was very faithful to who they were while still adding and building on them in a way that made them feel even more believable and relatable. Uh, the friendship between Aerith and Tifa is probably my favorite thing that they did there because these two characters have so much more chemistry and it's so pure and sweet and wonderful. And I just, ah, it was all so good. It was everything that I wanted and more until the last 10 minutes, which I maintain are awful. Um, so I was going to ask you about that. But so, for, so for folks that don't know, Sam does these super in-depth long videos analyzing video games as a piece of literature. They're super great. And he did one for the original Final Fantasy VII. The last time that he joined us, he was talking about that video. It was tremendous. YouTube.com slash games as literature. You should go watch it. Um, mm -hmm. I was very curious to know because there was a lot of controversy about the, how yeah. they adapted this story into the remake and you did this whole video about the story of this game um <laughs> what are your like what how did you feel like they interpreted it? obviously you didn't like it but you know if you want well, to everything is that everything that was like 
working on not to, I, i'm not just saying that they changed things and it's bad because there were a lot of things that they added or built on and they were fantastic everything that was still dealing with the original content of the story in one form or another absolutely fantastic absolutely loved it uh and i don't want to spoil too much but suffice it to say they add sort of uh they add a plot that sort of adds a layer of meta commentary on it and suggests that the rest of the game like as they make more of these remakes to cover the rest of the story might deviate and um i don't like the way they did it because, like I said, I, I have a fascination with adaptation, and I think that it's valuable. Like, I like I said, I think that the old formats for video games and storytelling are still fully legitimate and can do great things. But also, I recognize that not everyone can connect with them. People who have been raised on games in the past 10 years are going to have trouble going to a 23-year-old JRPG sometimes. And, like, I get that. I think it's important that we can experience old things. But that is a bigger gap than just it's a movie but black and white or something. Like, that is a... It's a legitimately more difficult thing for people to get over with that jump in technology. So I think that there is immense value in taking this classic, beloved, and very, I think, complex and meaningful story into a modern age so that people now can experience it in a way that works better for them in a similar way that the original worked for people who played it at that time. I think that is very valuable. And the way that they added this sort of meta commentary and meta narrative onto this game seemed to basically be saying that that is not an opportunity, but a constraint to be broken out of. And right. even I think there was one particular thing that felt a little mean spirited, like something could have turned out well in a way that it didn't originally. And they're like, well, nope, it has to be bad because you want it to be faithful. And I'm like, that yikes. <laughs> <laughs> call spec ops a guilt trip but that <laughs> i don't know like yeah so i i just i think that i value what the I, I was looking forward to having a way that i could hand this to like my nephew and be like hey this game meant a lot to me when i was a kid and i think that you can experience it now too and i don't think that value is completely gone but it's very clear that the game has disdain for the very thing that i think makes it special and that kind of sucks i guess um so yeah, I don't know. But that's the thing, is even with that, even with like hating the ending for that reason, man, everything else, every other way that they adapted the story and stuff, just pitch perfect, so good that it still had to be my game of the year. I just, they did an incredible job. And the soundtrack, uh, I could talk about it forever. <laughs> but, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I have problems with it, but overall, just fantastic adaptation of a classic, and I still think one of the best of all time games, and it's my game of the year. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to the hour and a half video <laughs> dissecting the plot of the remake. <laughs> oh gosh, maybe I'm, I'm calling you out, man. <laughs> um, given given how the game ended and what the, like the context that it set up for the future games, I don't know the spoilers, but um, are you like looking forward to what they're going to do in the future follow ups? Are you worried about what they might be planning on it? I'm I'm worried about what they might be planning, if only because I don't like the thematic shift that it took to it final fantasy 7 is about like environmentalism and capitalism and, and greed and stuff and the changes they made are kind of like we're gonna fight destiny and that is such a more like vapid stereotypical <laughs> jrpg thing um so well, like i don't happens. know <laughs> yeah i'm 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 excited for what they go do next regardless frankly but i would like for it to still stick generally to the story that i think is already extremely good and worth retelling in this context so we'll see what they do i guess but i am still excited yeah it didn't destroy my enthusiasm okay awesome uh well folks that's uh those are our games of the year but as mentioned we did not play every single game that came out in this year uh there were a lot of uh, really amazing games that came out last year that we wish we could have played so why don't we just uh fairly quickly run through some of the games that we really wished we we could have played uh if given the opportunity um so uh personally i'll, I'll just i'll kind of run through it um for me i have lived my entire life without a playstation and so literally any PlayStation exclusive that has come out in 2020 or in the last 10 years uh, are games that I wished I played in 2020. <laughs> um the, the the day that i get my hands That's so on so many amazing playstation exclusives though yep. there yep. are a lot of good ones now uh oh, no. so they're for... all coming to pc though so you can <laughs> start to play them yeah horizon zero dawn <laughs> I, I could get my hands on at some point oh, but yeah. Do that um, one. that one's good yeah, but so, you know, obviously in 2020, it was The Last of Us Part Two, it was Ghost of Tsushima, it was Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, the, the games that came before those are games that I would also love to play at some point. 
Uh, so yeah, the, the day that I get my hands on a PlayStation, I am in for a solid couple of months of gaming. Um, <laughs> we've also got uh, Fall Guys came out last year, and that's a game that I'm like... <laughs> Like, I, I watched a whole ton of it, actually. Like, I knew all the obstacle courses. Like, all my favorite YouTubers were playing it. I, I spent a ton of time on it. But uh, I never ended up picking it up because, I don't know, I feel like that's a game that's good to play with people. And I, I didn't necessarily have someone or the time to play it with other people. Um, so, I, I don't know. I love the whimsical nature of Fall Guys. I think it's a really great concept. It's taking Battle Royale away from uh, shooters and into... Uh, game show wipeout style thing i think is just a genius idea and just such an easy elevator pitch um so I, yeah i don't know i wish i got my hands on that one uh and then the only other thing that i'm interested in talking about here is crusader kings 3 um i did play it a little bit i uh, you know it was on game pass day one so I, I installed it and played it for a bit but i wish i could have sunk my teeth into crusader kings 3 because they did so many great things building off of crusader kings 2 um that i at least got a taste of in my few hours of playing it and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a game that you want to spend dozens of hours and hundreds of hours in, not necessarily just a few. So, yeah, that's that's th those. I would say those are my, my top three games that I wish I played. I'm waiting for the Crusader Kings three expansion that lets you summon Cthulhu. <laughs> then I will absolutely pick it up. There was there was one for two and I'm just waiting for the one for three. You know, so. uh, Kato, why don't, why don't you do some? Yeah, so uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is top of my list. Uh, I do have a PlayStation, and I did play Spider-Man PS4, and it was incredible, and yeah. I have not played Miles Morales yet, but I really, really need to. Um, I think I, you know, I don't I don't know what I'm waiting for. I'm not sure. I need to go to the store right after recording this and, <laughs> and pick that up, because uh, that game was incredible, the PS4 one, and just, even if it's just more of it, which I've kind of heard is what it is, it's it's a little bit just more Spider-Man PS4, that's okay. I'm very okay with that. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I had some VR stuff, because I do not have a VR headset. Uh, Half-Life Alex looked absolutely amazing, and I have at least gotten to experience some VR stuff, so I, uh, I know that joy, or I've at least touched on that joy of just being able to pick things up and and throw them and like i said i played robo recall once so i you know that picking up guns and stuff i really want to try actually manually reloading while head crabs are jumping at me and all those horrible things um but also i really want to play mist vr which came out this year i oh gosh am a huge... it did yeah it did it came how did out i not only... even hear about this only on oculus i don't know oh well, that's it's because why. nobody oh, was no. talking about it that's that's why nobody was talking about it at all. <laughs> oh, it came out yeah. the same day as cyberpunk so <laughs> oh, there were oh, some gosh, other okay. there were some other conversations happening <laughs> um and it is uh it's the mist remake so they are bringing it to uh 2d pcs uh but next or this year i guess sometime later this year uh right now it's exclusive to oculus i believe so I I really want to try that. Um, both of those things just make me so happy. I love Mist. I've talked about Mist on the show before. Uh, I just have such a deep love affair with that series. Um, so getting a remake in VR sounds incredible. Uh, although they did get rid of all the FMV people and made them what? weird animated people, and it looks not great. <laughs> so <laughs> not looking forward to that bit, but that's a really small part of Mist. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen screenshots. You should look up screenshots. It looks very strange. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but all the rest of it is is great. Uh, and then Ghost of Tsushima, which I actually own. It's uh, oh. uh, over there somewhere. I can't really <laughs> oh, it's, see it's it. It's not on, a, on our screen, but yeah, it's, it is in, oh, in your it's background. it's not on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian warned me about that, and I just ignored it and decided to point something out that none of you can see anyway. <laughs> but uh, I actually own it and just haven't had time to play it, uh, so I really want to try that. And Crash Bandicoot 4, because I love Crash Bandicoot also, but I didn't get to play 4. <laughs> oh, man. It's fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, so those right. were my games, my top games from 2020 that I wished I had played. There you go. Hit us, Sam. Well, uh, I've got a few... Uh, let's see, running through the ones that I'm just excited for. Uh, tell me why. It's a... Uh, yeah, narrative adventure game by the people that made uh, um, Life is why Strange. Why is the name of this game? Yes, Life is Strange. Why did that yeah. name leave my head? Uh, it looks very, very good. I actually bought it on the Steam sale, so I'm looking forward to getting that started. Uh, the problem now is that I see it in my game library, and I'm all, and my head immediately starts singing Backstreet Boys. So that's great. <laughs> uh, but okay, 
uh, the Pathless, which is what it's by the people that made. Um, uh, Wow, why am I forgetting the names oh, of other games? I don't games remember this one. This I, one. I, I don't remember, what one. And I don't remember what they made. It's the people that made Abzu and the soundtrack oh. by Austin Wintry, who did like Journey and Banner Saga and a bunch of other. Ah. He's just one of the best, uh, like currently working video game uh, composers out there for sure. Um, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's available on PS5, which, um, you know, is. <sighs> Do we My have partner PS5? and I saved up. PS5? We were planning on like a PS5 as our Christmas gift to both of us. <laughs> and we still haven't managed to get one, which is also why one of the, where is it? <laughs> one of we the can't see it, remember? Framing. On my list oh, he's good. <laughs> is Demon's good. Souls, which I pre-ordered and have <laughs> right here and can't play. Oh no. Oh. That's because horrible. I loved the original. Like I was one of those, you know, like Dark Souls got popular, and I was like, oh, I knew about it even before <laughs> Dark Souls. And I loved Demon's Souls, but I never finished it because <laughs> Souls games are kind of a pain. I love them, but they're kind of a pain. Um, and yet, uh, but you know, I loved it. And then the PS3 servers went down. I knew I couldn't get people to help me through the hard parts, like that stupid underground spider thing. And I was like, well, I'm. <laughs> I want them to remake it so that I can have online functionality again. And then they finally did. And I have it and I need to play it. I'm so excited. If anyone wants to buy me looking, a PS5. I've been looking constantly for a, a RTX 3070 for a graphics card. Uh, so mm. I feel your pain. Yeah, it's yeah. So yeah, that one. And then the one that I'm most excited to play in 20 uh, from 2020 is Trails of Cold Steel 4. Uh, I know that I'm like the only person ever who's played this series for some reason, but seriously, yeah. if you like JRPGs, play the Trails games. They're so good. You know, but... you played one of those recently, didn't you? <laughs> I have, yeah. Sam, oh, we've talked fun. about this. Okay, yeah, sorry. That's true, we have, <laughs> yes. I, this is one of those things. I always assume that no one else played it. I never remember that other people have because no one else has. <laughs> that's um, cool, that's cool. But yeah, no, just I love this series. I love the hell out of this series. Uh... Cold Steel 3 was, uh, th the problem is the Cold Steel 3 came out on the PS4, whereas I played the other two on the Vita, and these games are like 100 plus hours long, so I just recently finished it, and took me so long, and then I realized that my pre-order for, for 4 is for the Switch, which comes out six months after the PS4 version, isn't mm. coming out until March 31st, but what? it took me so long to play 3 on the PS4 that I figured that actually having it on a portable system like the switch is worth waiting yeah. because I'll actually get through it in a relatively timely fashion. So I'm just sitting here with one of my most anticipated games of the last many years already available and not playing it <laughs> until <laughs> my switch pre-order happens on March 31st. So uh, yeah, but seriously, these games are so good. If any of you watching have not played them and like JRPGs, start with sky or trails of cold steel either one is a good starting point but do all of them eventually they're so so good i recommend anyway, cold yeah, steel cool. and not sky as much but uh, to each <laughs> <Yeah>. their own <laughs> theoretically playing through it uh chronologically is the way to go except the cold steel is a better starting point in a lot of ways the battle system significantly improved stuff like that um and it's just that as of cold steel 3 the old stuff starts mattering a whole lot. <laughs> mm, um, that's good to know. And I, I do think the old ones are good, but I think that in many ways, Cold Steel is a better starting point, and it's not going to be too confusing because it's pretty self-contained until 3. But anyway, yeah, just love those. Looking forward to Cold Steel 4 the moment it comes to my house on March 31st. <laughs> Okay, awesome. There we go. Uh, so those are the, the 2020 games. Uh, we also wanted to take an opportunity to say, hey, we played a bunch of games that uh, didn't come out in 2020, but we did play uh, through last year. Um, so I don't know. I, I'll, I may as well start this off. I, I started Final Fantasy IX for the first time, um, oh. and it is also the first Final Fantasy I've completed. So I played Final Fantasy X, 13, and 15, and never finished any of them, and 15 was the only one I actively <laughs> disliked. And... Um, and nine, I really loved it. Like I, I felt like it was like easily the best one I've played so far. It has really, really good character arcs. Um, the, the, I don't know. The, the, the reason why I stuck around at least was to watch how these characters evolved over time because you saw glimpses of it really early on, and then it pays off in the end ultimately. I think. Um, and you know everything else like the combat and the, I don't know, the, the overarching narrative was good. But for the most part, I was there just to see what happened as opposed to you know actively invested in the gameplay. But. Anyway, older games don't usually capture me in a in a really 
uh, strong way. I, I find that I try them out just to see what they are, and then I'll move on. But uh, Final Fantasy IX was the first time I was like, hey, this is this is really working for me. So, uh, Final yeah, Final Fantasy is doing character work. It's usually their best stuff. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Let's just go around until we run out of time. Games that we that we loved in in uh, for, that we played for the first time in 2020. Go ahead, Kato. That's me. Um, the Sinking City. I have been on a major, major Lovecraft kick for the last like year <laughs> now. Um, I have been really investing myself in Call of Cthulhu stuff, and uh, I've been reading Lovecraft's work. Uh, I'm like a third of the way through, which some of those early short stories are something um <laughs> but uh the sinking city is it came out at like perfect time for me and if you've heard of it it's probably because of the frogwares controversy stuff with frogwares and nason uh, are having a having a little tiff but you can buy well, it on the a Switch. little tiff is one way of describing a it nason is trying to steal little, their ip from them <laughs> <little tiff. laughs> little bout um <laughs> But you can buy it on the Switch, and it's published by Frogwares there, so you can just bypass that controversy completely, and it's, <laughs> it's fine. Um, and that game is great. It's real glitchy. It's it's real janky. But if you're okay with, uh, I, I shouldn't say really janky. It's it's kind of janky. Uh, but if you enjoyed the idea of uh, Lovecraftian mysteries in an open world, I highly recommend it. It's really fantastic. <laughs> Well, I'll start off my thing with uh, the Yakuza series because I technically started Zero before 2020, I think, but I played through Zero and uh, Kiwami and I've started Kiwami 2 now also. Um, and man, I had heard about this series, but I had no idea. It's so good. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's just wholesome gangsters in Japan. <laughs> like ha half of these games are like, you know, serious and generally quite like well-written and interesting like crime dramas. And the other half is just the most just pure, wholesome, lovable <laughs> people constantly helping people with random stuff. And it's so, it's, these boys are so good and I love them. And it's just, it, it's weirdly endearing. It's, it's just so, I don't know. It's hard to really explain what it is because it feels like it would be two such different things like mashed weirdly into one. But man, these characters are so great. And I just love them so much. And the games are surprisingly, like, just wholesome and affirming and nice <laughs> overall. And then, you know, crimes happen and people die. But most <laughs> of the other time, you're, like, helping a dominatrix learn how to actually be mean to people. Or, it's my uh, favorite side quest in any so game. It's so good. Ever. Or, like, the one where there's this guy who's selling mushrooms and people keep, like, yeah. beating him up because they think it's drugs. And he's just like, I just... I just make mushrooms. I, I grow mushrooms. They're so good. They're the best. And then he keeps using this like, oh man, they'll blow your mind, man. They're just, they're so, he keeps using the flowery descriptions of them. So people think it's drugs and it's not like, it's just all of these weird, oh man, it's just, it's so good and so pure and nice. And uh, yeah, just, they're great. I love them. I'm looking forward to playing through just the whole series. They're, it's so good. Before I ever tried one, uh, somebody described it to me as Shenmue, but good. And I had no idea how to interpret that. I, <laughs> I played Shenmue and I was just kind of like, I don't really understand what that looks like. And then I played Yakuza 0 and was like, that is the only way to describe these games. <laughs> like Shenmue, but good. <laughs> yeah, they're very good. I've been hearing a lot about the series for a long time, or at least through the last year, especially. I'm I'm a big Xbox Game Pass person because I'm a full time student, so mm. having to only pay fifteen bucks a month for my games is like top tier for me. And uh, yeah. I had Yakuza installed, ready to play, and then they added Control Remedies Control to the Game Pass, Ooh. and I was like, I need to play that first. Like I've been, like that's been <laughs> at top of my list for so long, so it's been yeah, on the back burner, but it, it's coming up soon. I'm ready to play it. Yeah, um, it's just do. It's unlike anything good. you've ever played. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Hitman 2. So, oh God, what do we even say about Hitman? Like, Hitman to me is a, a perfect game for me where 
I mean, uh, it's designed this way, but you can go back to it whenever you want, and you're not going to feel like you're, you're missing out on anything. I have a big problem where if I don't start a game, I have a horrible memory. So if I start a game and then I put it away for a little bit, like I've done with so many games, and like right, right now it's like The Witcher 3, I'm like in the middle of it, and I don't remember anything that has happened when I <laughs> mm-hmm. left it. And so the hit, like for, for something like Hitman, which is so driven around its core gameplay loop of go kill people in the funniest way possible you caught me because I don't have to know what's going on when I dropped it. And uh, like, there's so much content in this game as well. Like so many different challenges and ways to do things. And obviously the AI patterns are so complex that you have to learn and stuff that every time I do go back to it, I feel like I'm getting like another unique experience um, that I haven't had yet. So it's going to take me a really long time to exhaust all of the gameplay that is available to me, especially because I'm kind of just trying to get every challenge at this point. Um, but I don't know. I think it's it's so well designed. I'm so excited for Hitman 3, and I'm very excited to see what they do with 007 and Bond. I, I think it's uh, it's a it's a perfect match for them. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that. That's going to be incredible. Yeah, I haven't played any of those, but I need to give these new ones a shot. I've heard just great things. <laughs> Hitman 2 was the first and only game I tried on Stadia. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it. I re- well, the game is, I'm sure, fine. Uh, the game is, I'm sure, fine. <laughs> Go ahead, Kato. Yeah, um, so I just added this. I don't know why I didn't think about it when we were making these lists, but uh, Among Us, I think, was oh. a big deal for a lot of people uh, this year, and I have gotten to play it maybe not as much as I have hoped for, um, but I love the idea of, like, psychologically analyzing your friends uh, and seeing them. I think the only real way to play this is with webcam and you're just like staring at the people as they're as they're talking and trying to determine if they're lying or not. It's so much fun. Uh, th- I've had moments where I'm like, I just know this guy's lying. I have no logical reasoning for it. I just know he's <laughs> lying. And other times where I'm completely wrong and I have screwed up literally everything and probably lost the game for the crewmates. <laughs> um, I it's so much fun to play with with the right group. And I do think that that's important. I would never want to play this game with random people online. I don't yeah. know how anyone ever does that. Uh, but if you have the right group of people that can just get together and and play this game, whether over webcam or whatever, it's free on mobile. So it's really easy to get people involved. Uh, five bucks on other platforms if you want. Um, it's it's so much fun. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of room for the social deduction games, right? Like mm-hmm. we, we saw uh, we saw glimpses of it with things like Secret Hitler, right? Which is a board game that a lot of people really loved. Um, there's that one where everybody has a unique role and you like you're like lynching people every turn. It was like an it's like almost like a flash uh, game. Mafia is what I knew it as. Yeah, uh, mafia or werewolf. Is like a werewolf. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of variations of the same basic thing. Right, yeah. and then and then there was like a there's a game that has come out on Steam where like every person has a unique role as mm-hmm. well, which is re- I for, I forget what it's called, but it was really popular. But anyway, um, it was it was janky. But I, as soon as I saw that game and how popular it was, I was like, there's room here to really have. A, a special opportunity for for you know this kind of game anyway so yeah i'm, I'm really excited yeah. to see among us get that and i hope that we get uh, inspirations from that success to develop more games like that maybe i don't you know there have been a lot of other games that have done this before and i'm not totally sure why among us in particular has been so popular I mean, um, even among it, us did it like two years ago yeah. it's like, true it's not a new game it just randomly got popular now when then aoc was playing it like yeah that's right oh my gosh that's right um yeah it's so i don't know if i need to see a lot of copycats uh in fact they've come out with new maps and i have not played a single one of them i only play the main the the spaceship (laughs) one um just i don't know there's something just very calming about it i don't think anybody could replicate it to be honest Mm. uh okay i think this is going to be the the last game so sam go ahead Oh no, but I have a few. Feel free uh, to run it, run down off. a few Just if you'd like. Yeah, list them off. Yep, list them yeah, off. okay. So I'll note that I played the first chapter of Higurashi when they cry, and uh, it was actually incredible. Like one of the best visual novels I've played ever, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Um, I played a short hike, which I found mm. just charming as hell. Recommended to everyone. It's very short and good. But the one I really want to talk about is Sayonara Wild Hearts. Yeah. Um, because I finally played that this year also. It's described by the people who made it as a playable pop album, and I think that's about as good a description as you can get. It's sort of like a hybrid, like, action racing slash rhythm game-ish, but mainly 
it's aesthetic as hell. Like <laughs> it, it's it's got this just incredible sort of like cell shaded neon art style mixed with this just amazing, amazing soundtrack in this uh, sort of like abstract story of self discovery. And it's one of the like there are a few games I think that I that are short, accessible, and meaningful that I think are just worth sitting down and dedicating a couple hours to play through every now and again. Journey is on there. Um, Portal, probably. Also, not so much meaningful, but just it's very good and short, and you can just get through it, and it's worth playing sometimes. Yeah. And Sayonara Wild Hearts is up there, too, for me. Like, I would like to revisit this game at least once a year just to experience it again. It's one of those things that I think can have a lot of meaning and is just an... Ex it's one of the more emotive games I've played in a long time. It's it's just oozing with its own style and the the emotions that it's trying to bring up with them. And I loved it. I loved the hell out of it. It's a really, really good one. And I recommend it to pretty much anyone, honestly. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've heard uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about it, but I, I don't think I've ever actually seen the game before, but uh, certainly I've, <laughs> I've seen the name around a lot. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, well, it, it's a good one. Uh, folks, that, that's going to wrap us up. That's been a, an hour of, of talking about video games. Thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Uh, I, I had a great time with the two of you talking about that. Revisiting 2020, what a, what a year it's been for, <laughs> for video yeah. games. Uh, why don't we take a second to just tell people where we can find you if they want to follow up. Uh, Kato? Uh, best place to follow me right now is Twitter at VG underscore of the day. Uh, hopefully 2021 we'll see a return of uh, video game of the day. But uh, I don't know. Life is crazy right now. So just follow me on Twitter uh, and Instagram at VG underscore of the day. And uh, Sam, I know I've said your channel a few times, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, my content is at uh, youtube.com slash games as literature. But if you go search for games as lit 101, which is sort of like the name of the show, you'll find it there. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, best place for that, as long as you don't also mind a lot of politics posting is uh, is Twitter. <laughs> um, it's uh, twitter.com slash games as yeah, the handle is at games as lit at Twitter. And if you're watching on YouTube, that is on your screen right now. It's real easy to find. Uh, folks, oh, if you cool. want more from The Observer, you can go to thegamingobserver.com. You'll find all of the links that you're ever going to need. And uh, otherwise, yeah, folks, thanks thanks for, so much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you for, for joining me. And uh, until you. next time. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, and until next time, <laughs> happy gaming, everyone. Happy gaming, everyone.